and in business, the International Monetary Fund presented its regional economic outlook for sub-Saharan Africa with a focus on policy and structural reforms issues which may impede growth. Our business correspondent Irene Obani gives us details. The International Monetary Fund presented its regional economic outlook for sub-Saharan Africa with a focus on policy and structural reforms issues which may impede growth. The IMF Mission Chief and Senior Resident Representative for Nigeria, Amin Mati, spoke on the heterogeneity of different countries and the need to reduce debt through fiscal consolidation, reduction in financial constraints and the effect of trade tensions on the growth in the sub-Saharan African regions. The three largest countries, which are the ones that are really driving sub-Sahara growth, Angola, South Africa and Nigeria, and you can see here are lagging. Uh, Angola with negative growth, South Africa a growth below 1%, and Nigeria growth between 2 and 2.5%, and which is still negative per capita growth. I know some in the room here, every time I'm in Nigeria, say, oh, but we're still doing better than South Africa. Yeah, but you still need to be <laughs> higher. I mean, the median, is, when, when you're looking at it, I mean, Nigeria is, is at the, the first three quarters, the numbers that came out is 2.2%. Um, so, you know, our forecast is 2.3% for the year. I think it's still on track, depending on where agriculture and ICT and so those sectors are going to come up. Also, Bismarck Rwani, the MD CEO at Financial Derivatives, spoke on the need for a more competitive market and also the need for structural changes. For liquidity management, Nigerian individuals, corporates and others are not allowed to buy homo bills because Automobiles are for liquidity management, actually. So in, that means that since that decision, interest rates have effectively come down by about three to 400 basis points. Um, so that's good in terms of if, if that can be transmitted into lending and lending can be transmitted into activities that will bring growth, but if not, if not, the marginal propensity to save, because savings is a function of interest, all right? So when the marginal propensity to save actually declines, the marginal propensity to consume increases, because it's consumption plus savings that gives you a total income. Then underneath the marginal propensity to consume is the marginal propensity to import. And so when you do that analysis crudely, it the law and internal consequences begin to stare at you. So the ERGP competitiveness pillar is divided into two parts, and I'm sure you know this. The first part on hard infrastructure, roads, power, rail, broadband, airports, seaports. And the second half, which is perhaps for the first time a systemic intervention on regulatory, bureaucratic bottlenecks. We focus on reduction of cost and time and we focus on making sure that there's more transparency and information in the system. Nigeria is one of only 18 countries that has a subnational doing business report. And we worked with state governments unanimously, everyone across the board got on board, by partnering with the National Economic Council, also chaired by the Vice President. For us, a few things that we take in government and train them that it's important for us to have clear direction, policy direction and signal the right environment for money to come in. And we're seeing uh, those are doing well in the sub-region. Usually when I'm being presented, this, I know for course, he wants us to look at the entire sub-region, but then, always because we're Nigerians, we look at Nigeria. But if you look at what Ghana is doing, what Ethiopia is doing, the question is that they are not doing anything that is not in the economic text, and how do we get ourselves doing it? So it's about awareness, it's about knowing the urgency of the time and the need to do something. And so, for us, key priority is let's deal with macroeconomic stability. Let's continue to try and see what we can do to improve the business environment. And I've challenged my friend and said, there are some low hanging foods in this ease of doing business thing that we're doing. Now we need to deal with the big issues. Um, custom, single, uh, since I was young, we're talking about single single window, and we move from a school that single window was still there. What do we need to do around that? People talk about power being the problem in Nigeria. Yeah, it's a power, but then if we pay the right prices, 
the power will come. For Plus TV Africa, Irene Ubani.